it's set deep in your mind, it was so real and it scared you. And even hypnotists, all they will bring out is what's in your mind. I don't care how deep it is or anywhere. I believe there was monsters because I had dreams. And you know, I'm sure a hypnotist probably could dig deep in me and find out there. I yeah. think there's monsters here and there. But it's, you just had a dream. I can't see why you realize it's so real. Could I yeah, sure. jump in, Cher. Okay. <clears throat> I agree with you. If this was all there is to it, then it would be very realistic to say that people have dreams. Uh, and in many cases, people do dream things. But uh, the reason that I think something is going on is, like I said, I do research in this, and I work with over 90 cases. There are landing sites in people's backyards that were put there the night something, for example, this one case, this mother and her young son separately remembered something happening. The landing place was a perfect circle. It looked like you put down masking tape and somehow killed the inside of the grass. It was tested at a lab. There was no poisons, no chemicals that would have done it. The ground was baked inside the circle. The insect population was greatly reduced and it was radioactive as compared to the outside of the circle. Also, we have a couple of cases now that implants have been retrieved. Um, abductees remember, as Cindy, or as many do, implants being placed in the nose, in the ear, in the wrist, in the leg, wherever. These and are like little metal, uh, I don't know. Could uh, be metal babies. Uh, it could be other things. Um, but they have, two have been retrieved and are being studied. More are about to be retrieved. Cindy's going to have an MRI to try and find the one in her nose. Okay. So you think you have one in your nose where the two holes are, Cindy? Well, the holes are in my mouth. No. But, but you think that Maybe in they that general area. The nose. I think that might be what they did. I I can't be sure. You don't you don't feel anything. You can't feel anything with your hand on the no, roof of your mouth or anything. No, if they it, it would be in my brain. Could we see the holes in your mouth? Um, I don't <laughs> think it's possible. Uh, <laughs> they're very apparent. They I mean, are you, very you apparent. You can see them. Yeah, they're very but apparent. Not, the camera couldn't capture them. But maybe we'll turn her upside very... down on a commercial break and try to film that. <laughs> That's very sensitive of you, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> Phil. Uh, Cheryl, uh, you mentioned having a sort of a needle st uh, stuck in your stomach area. Mm -hmm. Is there a scar there? Is proof of that? Well, uh, <laughs> it wasn't that big. No, uh, it wasn't that that big of a hole that over the last, I'm, I'm 41, and I think any scar... So you scar, think it's cleared up if there I, was a scar? Right. Uh, but Cindy, you had a similar thing, you, you say. They put you on a table. Right. Um, with the needle, yes, I did. Um, that was in 1973. That was when you were a little older, of course. Mm, I was 12. Yeah. I... Go ahead. Uh, I would, at that time, I was driving down um, the a highway in Alabama with my mother, and a craft appeared on our right, and um, I thought it was the planet Saturn, and I tried to tell my mother that so she wouldn't get too nervous, but that didn't make sense, of course. And um, about four miles down the highway, when it was still there, I realized that it was following us and it went over our car and went down in front of our car onto the top of the telephone pole and uh, there were 12 other cars or so ab around us and my mother rolled down the window and said to the guy next to us she goes you think it's UFO and the guy goes I guess and um, then a white beam hit me in the face and I, I was completely paralyzed and I rested my head on the window and um, that's the last thing I remember before I woke up with my feet in my mother's lap and the car door was being slammed on my back and the crap was gone and the other cars were gone and we were a few feet ahead on the highway and my mother was trying to start the car back up. Then we How did you know that there's been time, I was, that you've lost time? I was a very serious ballet student and we drove pretty far to, our, um, to the school I went to and we always left with plenty of time to get there and when we arrived uh, the class was nearly over. And my father was for the FAA, and he, um, my mother, he was working at the airport that night. My mother called him to um, report the UFO, and he told us that it was not a UFO. It was a rocket trail from Cape Canaveral, and my mother um, chose to believe that, and um, I did too at the time, but ten years later, um, my father told me that a lieutenant colonel from the Air Force called also, and he reported that same object. Mm -hmm. Yes, you had a question. For you... Uh, for Cheryl. Cheryl. Um, what struck me strange is you say that your mother had this experience, then you had it, and then your son. It makes me, you know, think maybe it was instilled from one person, then you heard it so often, and then your son heard it from you. So 
Okay. How could you know that it wasn't just instilled? That's a reasonable question. Um, for one thing, I never spoke about it with my mother until two years ago. And I, I was just starting to find out that these things that I remembered and things that people in my husband's family remembered. Um, I have a sister-in-law who felt she was going crazy because these things were happening and these little bald-headed things were in a room at night and she, she was in very bad shape. And we went to a lecture and found out that other people are seeing these things in their house and having these things done. So I spoke to my mother at that time and said, Mom, I've heard about something. I know it sounds crazy, but what do you think? And that's when she said, well, I have no problem with that. I saw one when I was a kid over my house, and I, I've had this happen, I've had that happen. And so I thought, and she never talked about it? And so then it was so several months later, and I told my son, just so he's warned and doesn't hear from somebody else what kind of crazy stuff I'm looking into. And right off the bat, he said, well, Mom, you know, when I was a kid, this happened, this happened, I saw this. And, and there, was were there consistencies in the story? I mean, were there consistent things in the story. Yes. Yeah. There, there's certain patterns. And since then, we've worked with other teenagers. And we've put a group of teenagers. I have support groups as well. And we've put teenagers together. And they'll come up with something. And, and I'll cringe and think, oh, what a crazy thing to say. And then the other teenagers will say, that's right. I had that happen when I was a kid, too. And it did this, and it did this. And I'd sit there and think, OK, teenagers are just hallucinating. That's it. They're fantasy prone. And then one of the teenagers' mother said, remember I told you about that? I had the same experience, and it, and it was a conscious memory. And when they do that, I sit back and think, my gosh, what's going on? Cindy, uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, we're going to Cindy now, back to your 1973 story. Is it true you, you think you became pregnant on, on uh, this UFO? Uh, I think it's...